Welcome to In The Workshop, making a large type gas canister valve adapter for gas firing model steam boilers. A few episodes ago I made this, it's a tailstock die holder to hold this very large die that I bought from eBay. And as you can clearly see since the last episode I made the handle for it. I made the handle using a piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter steel, I threaded it 5 16 by 32 threads per inch which screwed into a drilled hole that I also threaded 5 16 by 32 in the main body of the tailstock die holder. Now it's time to test it out. I found a piece of brass bar that was 16 millimeters in diameter. I cleaned up the end of the brass bar in the new chuck that I bought recently. Now it's time to see if my tailstock die holder works. Once I engaged the die on the end of the piece of brass bar, the threading operation was carried out under power. Note to self, it's always a good idea to really tighten the chuck to hold brass bars in place before threading them. This is a large die with very deep threads and it puts a lot of pressure on the work. But the result is good, the threads are very clean. I'm not going to use this piece of brass for the job, I'm just using it to get a feel for the die in the die holder. As you can see, the threads on this piece of brass are quite deep, and I did use some threading lubricant when I cut the threads. The big question now is, does it fit the canister? And I'm very pleased to announce that yes, it fits perfectly, despite the four rings on the body of the piece of brass, caused by the brass bar rotating in the new chuck jaws. When I make the real thing, I'll tighten up the brass a lot more than I did on this. So what am I making? This is a camping gas cylinder, and this is a camping gas regulator. And the job begins. I'm using a much bigger piece of brass bar because I need it to have a flange on the top which compresses an o-ring to seal the connection. You'll see this later on in the video. First job as always, face across the front. The first facing cut didn't get through all the saw marks. Now it's time for the first of the longitudinal cuts. I need to reduce the diameter of this piece of brass bar down to 16 millimeters. So quite a few cuts are needed and at this speed it's really messy. The chips were flying everywhere, so I've slowed the lathe down by engaging back gear. Now I can take deeper cuts and the chippings go down into the chip tray, instead of all over the lathe saddle, the lathe bed, the tailstock and me. And the worst thing is, these brass chippings are incredibly sharp and will stick into your fingers very deeply with the least provocation. Health and safety warning, never touch these brass particles. Time to check the measurement. And that seems quite close enough to me. I really don't like these caliper things, I much prefer a micrometer. Time now to thread the piece of bar. For model engineering threads, which are very fine, I never use lubricant on brass, but as you've seen previously, these threads at 16mm by 1.5 are very deep relative to an ME thread, and that's why I'm using the lubricant. So here's the job, I've slowed the lathe down, using back gear, and I'm cutting the thread. And in this part of the clip, I'm withdrawing the die holder. The thread's okay, but I miscalculated. I could not get the die right up to the end. And before all the experts write in, yes, I am aware that if you turn the die around in the die holder, it will cut more or less to the end of the travel. But I want to leave a little bit of this parallel to take the O-ring. The thread itself needs to be half an inch long. Also, at the moment, I'm basically making a plug, which is no good for a valve adapter. After completing the turning, it's take two with the die holder. Here, once again, I'm withdrawing the die holder from the work. Time to see whether I've got a good thread or not. Some viewers may be asking, why are you using such a big die? Why not screw cut this part? Well, the answer to that is simple. This lathe does not have a gearbox and I don't have enough change wheels to get it to the thread that I need. And from my point of view, early attempts at screw cutting were very unsuccessful. I often ended up with something that looked like a strand of DNA. If you wonder what I'm doing at the moment, I'm making the special fitting that's on the end of the thread that depresses the ball inside the canister to let the gas out. I've turned a shape piece at the end of the thread and I've used a centre drill first, followed by a twist drill to drill a hole down the middle. And once I'd done that, I chamfered both the thread and the end part using a file. The next part of the job is to turn the external diameter to match the fitting on the gas canister. And now it's time to part off the work. Parting off a piece of brass can be done fairly quickly and it's a very simple job. If you're parting off cast iron, you need to go a lot slower than this 
and if it's steel, you will need a lubricant. But with brass, you just get on with it at quite a high speed. In this clip, I'm holding the work by the edge of the threads. This is not a good idea, so if you do this, make sure that you use very fine cuts. You do not want the part to jump out of the chuck, because you cannot hold things by threads very securely. And here, using fine cuts once again, I'm chamfering the edge. At this stage, the part is still held by the threads. I've used a centre drill, and here I'm using a 9 32nds twist drill, which is tapping size for 5 16 by 32. Do not do this, it's time to mount the part in the chuck properly. If I continue to tap this hole, the entire thing will spin round in the chuck and the threads could be damaged. So it's time to hold the part properly by its outer diameter. But there's method in my madness. I initially started off the threading operation holding the part by the M16 by 1.5 thread. But once the 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap started to bite, I slackened off the chuck and removed everything, tap and all, from the chuck. Then I opened the chuck jaws and held the work by the outside diameter. Once I'd threaded the hole, I put the part back into the chuck held by the threads just to clean it up with a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. And here is the job so far. But if I screw this part like this into the canister, it's not going to work, as there's no way for the gas to get out. Using my bandsaw, first of all, I cut a rough slot in the end and then used a needle file to tidy it up. Now it's time to fit the valve. A bit of Loctite 542 to make sure it seals, followed by a copper washer. To tighten this, I put the part temporarily back in the chuck and used my barcode spanner to tighten up the valve. Time now for the O-ring. In my box of O-rings, I found one that was just the right size and fitted it on the blank part of the thread. And the valve seems to work okay. No leaks at all until I open the tap at the top. It screws in and out very easily. The O-ring seals it. Yes, this will do fine. I don't need the union nut and cone, so I'm removing that to put in it back in my box of union nuts and cones. There's just one more part left to make. This is the gas outlet nozzle. Generally speaking, I connect the gas supply to my steam engine boilers using thick-walled silicone rubber tubing. In this clip, I'm cutting a selection of grooves at equal distances along the nozzle. This will help to grip the silicone rubber tubing. And after that, I parted it off. To make sure that the hole was entirely in the centre of the nozzle, I drilled first of all one end using a centre drill and then a twist drill, but I didn't go all the way through. This is the point that I went all the way through after I drilled the part tapping size for 5 16 by 32. After threading the hole and cleaning it up, it's time to fit the finished component to the tap, complete with the usual coating of Loctite 542 hydraulic seal. I don't want any leaks in this area. I turned the diameter of the nozzle to 5 16 of an inch, which makes it quite a tight fit on the silicone rubber tubing. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.